the Indian writing industry doesn't have one voice. In uh, Mr. Vishwanathan's speech, I saw like a writer. You are not united. You are not sitting together. You don't have a common voice. We've done in India. So we've got this uh, you know, relief. Yeah, I think uh, that is the major issue. Let's write this perspective. Uh, what we've done is speech is extremely comprehensive on the physics. And, uh, but I let Lloyd do the honors and I won't see the stanza. A big year of applause for Lloyd Paske. And we hope one day we all be able to share his 4,200 euro wine. Each bottle is numbered. The wine is called Liver Pate. Just look up the Google and you read so much about it that you won't know where to stop. Right? Stay yours. And can I request the event management team to put another chair, please? Okay, it's, uh, thank you very much, uh, too much for the invitation. Thank you very much for uh, privacy. Thank you for Tristan and Isabella for this uh, wonderful room. And uh, I would like to speak uh, uh, about wine, uh, of course, but uh, I would like to introduce you the, the, the wine so, 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 industry, it's also our culture, it's also our civilization. And it's very important to understand that because uh, to make wine you can make wine everywhere. But if we, want, if we make a wine, uh, a very specific wine, we need to have a good varieties, we need to have a good soil. And I think it's very important to, to find in India or everywhere in the world the good place to make wine. So uh, I don't know if you have two questions or about. Uh, okay, uh, what do you prefer? You want to. Uh, Talk about your wines? I, I can speak about my own problem if you want to. And then another question on the session. Okay, but I can speak about a little bit about Lila Pate. You know, uh, Lila Pate is a very specific wine because we are in the grave uh, of appellation. We are uh, Vin de France, we don't use the appellation because uh, we work with the sub rule, they are not uh, authorized in the law, in the French law. So uh, the, 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 the goal of Lila Pate is to find the true test of Bordeaux before Philoxera. You know, in Europe, we have a big insect destroying all the linea. The name of this insect is, uh, is Philoxera. And we lose the test of Bordeaux and uh, all the uh, test of wine in Europe with this uh, insect. The, everybody knows the classification in 1855. Nobody knows the wine, the test of the wine like in 1855. So I want to uh, refine this test in a bottle of Lila Pate. We use the 14 autochtone varieties from Bordeaux, like uh, of course Carina Sauvignon Petit Verdot, but, but we use also Castex, uh, saint macaire uh, Parte, uh, Lose, Camarade, and 14, 14 variety grapes. For me it's important because one is not only industry, one is one time we get is for culture, it's for civilization. It's 10,000 years old in Europe, and we have a specific, the old, the old man before me, and the, since uh, more than uh, 1,000 uh, years old, they created the specific varieties for the vineyard, for the soil. And the copper uh, variety grapes and terroir is very important. You have two ways to make wine. You have one way where you use the, the quality of the varieties. For example, you make a blend with Merlot and Cabernet Sauvignon, you, you put 80% of Cabernet Sauvignon and 20% of Merlot because you want fat and alcohol. And you have another way, so the first way is like a soup, you make a, a big a, a test. And you have the other way is to make the, 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 to have the message of the soil. And to have the message of the soil, to have the message of the terroir, you need to use the variety where, where the variety are born. For example, Cabernet Sauvignon is only in grave area. Cabernet Sauvignon was created for acidity soil with gravel. If you put Cabernet Sauvignon in clay, you lose the, 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 the message of the terroir. So I think it's very important to understand that because it's two ways, it's two different strategies. But one is, one, once again, it's our culture and we need to present it. In Europe, we have this culture. Of course, we can make wine everywhere, but we need to sell this, uh, this expression of the terroir. After, we can find another place 
When they give you a magnetron message with this grep, with this photo to a grep, but it's an android story. So it's a... Hey, uh... Yes? Wait, 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 they are all speaking in many voices, you know, and I think, you know, like uh, in uh, Mr. Vishwanathan's speech, I saw like a wine manifesto, you know, uh, like an Indian wine manifesto of what the industry expects the government to do. I, I think it's, it could have been more clearly articulated than it was. Where, where is the industry? Uh, right now, we are sitting over here. Where is the industry? You guys, as I said, that you are not united, you are not sitting together. You don't have a common voice, you don't have a common platform. We as a trade association have fought with the government on everything. We have separate laws which have been drafted for international food, from stickering allowed, from labeling uh, to be done in India. So we've got this uh, you know, relief from the government because we were able to fight it out. You guys are not willing to fight it out. Yeah, I think uh, <laughs> that is the issue, you know. Um, and, uh, you know, uh, so Oscar, you know, like from a restaurant's perspective, uh, what do you think is really hurting you? Because as an Italian mind, uh, as an Italian restaurant, you naturally look to create a great international wine list. What, what are the barriers in the restaurant here that you feel? Okay, first of all. Uh, and, uh, so you have the experience about Delhi and Bulgaria. Yeah. Two neighboring states, half an hour away, you know, half an hour drive away from each other. What is the difference of experience? Uh, First of all, uh, just I want to just uh, think that uh, like uh, Mr. Bajnav's uh, speech has been extremely uh, comprehensive and uh, there will be almost any question you might come up with this panel was already answered, right? So you really should have a transcript and maybe produce a slightly simplified version without the quantum physics and uh, really as a, as a manifesto to kind of like subscribe by the industry, by the participants and so because uh, it is quite complex. You say just Actually, like, yeah, you know, um, uh, Mr. Vishwanathan, you know, I asked you for the transcript, you know. Uh, please, uh, you know, uh, we are in touch with each other, so let's uh, follow this up. This is a very important suggestion. Yeah, because it is really quite complex. I mean, over the years I've been speaking with virus experts, and I always found, you know, somebody might be right on something, but there's nobody really understands everything. And if you look at it very, very carefully, maybe even that speech, there was almost some more inaccuracy. So to get a really uh, comprehensive set of issues together with the post solution, I think that would be uh, very, 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 very useful. And this is complex because as I just say, just Ariana and Bailey, the situation is very different. So when you have like, a discussion and you start to talk about something, ah, uh, it's this and that, so it's not. It's not like that because he or she would refer to a, a different reality. Again, it was, it was referred to in the speech, if it would be under GSP and, 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 or much of that would be taken care of, but not all of it. There is, uh, so, Hadana is, is a, like a monopoly market. <laughs> that, that, that's an additional dimension, yes. Yeah, and you know, so every year you, you are, you are swimming in uncertainty, you know, like, Well, I mean, uncertainty you have everywhere, like that, yes, in every business, in every country. Uh, but yes, the, the uncertainty is maybe just a bit faster and uh, in other places and makes the planning more difficult. Uh, okay, so, uh, Elia, you represent Bulgaria. Uh, we are slowly learning about uh, Bulgaria and you know, her extensive gave an excellent uh, talk and the film was self-explanatory. Huh? How do you think in a market like India, how do you think, where does the real Bulgarian wines and terms and how do you think you can promote Bulgarian wines when all the people are talking about their problems? Thank you, thank you for the question. First of all, uh, I would like to say that the Bulgarian is really a long-standing tradition in wine producing. Uh, I mean, it's part of our uh, history. Uh, as well as part of our culture, cuisine, spirits, uh, 
and uh, we were producing in Bulgaria, there was, according to the statistics, uh, more than uh, 100, uh, 110 million people at that point. And uh, 65 million people are exported abroad, mainly exported to European countries as uh, Poland, Czech Republic, uh, Russia, of course, but also to US, China, and Japan. That's why I hope, no, I'm sure that the next destination will be India. There are really a lot of incentives in Bulgaria for the foreign investors in the sector. Let me mention, uh, for example, that the corporate tax in Bulgaria is 10%. Personal income tax is also 10%. There is no such uh, country in Europe, in the, in the European Union. Uh, there is also such program, governmental program for promotion of the sector in Bulgaria, uh, funded by you. The next uh, five years, uh, from uh, 2019 to 2023, budget of this program is uh, 134 million euro for promotion of uh, the Bulgarian wine growth and uh, for uh, promotion of the creation of uh, wine yards in Bulgaria. So, yes, uh, by, by the way, by the way, many countries started to invest in this sector. Area. Of course, the uh, investors, because in Bulgaria at the moment we have approximately 230 wineries, but from them, one third of them uh, are foreign, uh, foreign investors. So we have approximately 80 uh, wineries, donors of these wineries in Bulgaria, foreign investors. They are coming mainly from France, uh, Germany, and uh, Poland, but which is interesting. We have also investments in this field from China. At the moment, Chinese investors are uh, cultivating more than 4,000 hectares of uh, wine yards in Bulgaria. So, uh, so in this the way, investors? unfortunately, especially in this sector, we don't get there. But I would like to encourage you, that's why I mentioned all the uh, all these incentives, I mean the lowest corporate tax in Europe, the lowest uh, personal income tax, we are talking about 10% per tax. You can't really find such a country in Europe. So, the labor cost, uh, the, the price is quite uh, competitive also in Bulgaria. So, it's the way. I mean, if uh, I would like to encourage all the Indian importers to start some business in Bulgaria, in this field. I mean, uh, we produce, as uh, our ambassador told you, of course, we have big varieties of uh, grapes, in Bulgaria wine grapes. Uh, the local ones are Dunza, uh, Mabut, the famous one, Amit. But of course, we produce also the famous uh, varieties of wine, as Chardonnay, Sauvignon Blanc, uh, all of them, Merlot you can find in Bulgaria. So, don't hesitate too much. Come in Bulgaria and try to start such business. We have three big exhibitions in this field in Bulgaria. Uh, the, the famous one is Vinaria, organized in February in Bulgaria. The other one is uh, Salon Juven uh, in November every year. And in June we have one competition, the Balkan Wine the Balkan Swine Competition in Bulgaria every June, organized in Sofia. So I think it's the way. The, the Indian importers, they have to visit Bulgaria, but they are most welcome there. And they have to meet their partners and try in the beginning to import Bulgarian wine, after that, why not to invest in uh, some wine goods? There are really a lot of possibilities in this, uh, this sector in Bulgaria. So, uh, Oscar, you know uh, where to send your rich friends to? You? Invest in Bulgaria. <laughs> uh, then, uh, it's not too far from Italy. No, it's not too far from Italy, yeah, that's right. <laughs> okay, uh, can I request again, you know, people at the wine counters, you know, can you please move to the front? Aman Dhal, welcome. Uh, can everyone please move to the front?
Uncle Mel, don't use this opportunity to move to the back. Okay, very good. Well, uh, sir, uh, we began with the uh, Loic. Uh, uh, Swati, I, you come and introduce our. Uh, I'll just finish and wind up our session. Okay? Yeah. Uh, Loic, any last words on how India can promote the wine culture? That's what we have in how India can become the big market, like what uh, Mr. Vishwanathan said, how India can become the next China in terms of wine. Uh, it's a big question. You know, it's, uh, I'm not politic, but I'm not even your own when it comes to it. Uh, it's a loser right for me, but maybe of course if you, you have a lot of tax, maybe we need, uh, we need to have uh, less taxes, maybe to, we can import more despairs or wine from, from your own. Because in Europe we have uh, uh, this culture of wine, we have a lot of wine, we, beautiful wine in Italy, in Germany, in Bulgaria, in, uh, in, in Spanish, in, uh, in Portuguese we have beautiful wine, but of course if tax are too high, people come in Europe to buy, but they don't buy, they cannot buy here. I don't know the tax in the restaurant, but I think it's very expensive. And uh, today our clients buy in Europe, uh, our client by the Liga Pater in London and Dubai by the Liga Pater in Actually, uh, what Lloyd was saying, uh, uh, saying to me yesterday, that there's a lot of Indians who go abroad and buy the wines. I know that uh, you know uh, picking up the wines at duty free shops is a very big activity among Indians and Indians are big consumers of duty free wines. You know? But unfortunately, they do not pick up anything, they don't pick up much in India. And, uh, you know, as I said, we have uh, wine lists which are absolutely abysmal, you know, sometimes, you know. Uh, some of the wines available in the restaurants are really bottom of the uh, barrel, you know. Uh, and that has to, uh, some uh, direction has to be made in that, you know, I think. Uh, uh, on, on that note, uh, I think one big, uh, what I gathered, the two big takeaways from the session, one is, of course, uh, the invitation from Bulgaria to invest in Bulgaria. Uh, so uh, let's see which will be the first Indian wine to be produced in Bulgaria. And uh, the other of course is that uh, we keep talking about the, uh, the central, the customs duties, but the bigger challenge for uh, in India, especially the imported wine business in India, is the challenge of uh, registration of labels, of local taxes. It is said that India is a nation of 28 laws as far as alcoholic beverages are concerned. It has to, uh, some way out has to be found. And if that way out has to be found, it has to be found by giving the wine industry one voice. And that is, I think, uh, Ashita Amit the, the, Lohani has presented it beautifully. The, on the food front, the, the FIFI has achieved big successes, but the same successes haven't been registered on the wine Run, you know, and it, it is time we turn the clock and, uh, you know, we all united and spoke with one voice. Um, uh, so thank you, the gentleman and, you know, the lady among us. I hope there are more women. <laughs> but there will be lots of women at the, at the awards. So, you know, the gender balance will be sort of, you know, sort of maintained there. Um, I would request Mr. Arora to come on the stage and welcome a very special guest. It's uh, uh, His Excellency, the Ambassador of Greece. So, uh, at, at the end, I would like to show you one short video, only two minutes, what uh, is our Ambassador of Bollywood, Bulgaria became quite popular destination for Bollywood the last few years. Oh, okay, okay, so okay. Also for Bollywood, and I would like to show you what the biggest Bollywood stars think about Bulgaria, about the Bulgarian wine, Bulgarian food, and of course about Bulgarian shooting destination. Two minutes on the video. But that's okay, yeah, so uh, uh, Mr. Arad, uh, Arad, uh, we cannot have an Indian event without uh, Bollywood, you know, so two minutes for Bollywood in Bollywood. Bollywood, you are talking about now Bollywood, yeah. Yeah, the Bollywood stars.